Hi, in this video we're going to be going over a trig functions question from the Applications and Interpretation IBSL exam, May 2024, Paper 1, Time Zone 1. Alright, so in this graph we have a model of what's happening with a river. It tells us that D is the depth of that river and T is the time in hours after 12 o'clock. Alright, so the first part of the question is asking us um, what is A, what is B, and we have an equation here. So in order to figure out what A, B, and um, anything else here is in this question, we have to remember the general equation of a sine curve. And so the general equation of a sine curve, I'll put it here at the top, is Y equals A sine B X plus C, and that's assuming no phase shift, and there will be no phase shift in any of these questions. All right, so you may recall that A is the amplitude. So the number that's in front, the number that is in front of that sine curve here, that sine uh, function there, is the amplitude. And the amplitude is half the height. I'll write that down. The amplitude is half the height. So half the top minus the bottom. So where's the top, where's the bottom? The question actually tells us this information. So it tells us that at 1500 hours, the depth of the water reaches seven meters, which is its highest level. So that's the top and the depth drops to one meter eventually, which is its lowest level, which is the bottom. So we know from that, that the amplitude is a half, let me write that down, A equals a half top, which is seven, minus bottom, which is one. So that's a half of six, and we get our amplitude A to be equal to three. And I'm doing my work here because uh, I don't want to keep scrolling back and forth to the answer page, so bear with me as I write where I have some space. All right. So now part B is asking for this value. And so let's go back to our general equation. Um, so it's asking for this value. Let's go back to our general equation. And I'm going to remind you now that from the general equation, this value tells us the number of cycles in 360 degrees. And I'll write that down for us. That B tells us the number of cycles in 360 degrees. And this is for applications and interpretation. This is um, in applications and interpretation, degrees are always used, not radians. And so this is for degrees. This is the number of cycles in 360 degrees. All right. With that said, what does a cycle look like? I'm going to draw an entire full cycle here. Um, because we don't have a full cycle, and excuse my shaky hand at the moment. Oh, getting better. All right. So a cycle of the sine curve starts in its center. It goes up. It goes up to its maximum point, then down to its lowest point, and then goes back to its center. And when I say its center, I mean height-wise. So it has the top here, the bottom here, but it starts in the middle, goes up, down and back. All right, and so that's what a full cycle of the sine curve looks like. So now the question is how many of these full cycles are in 360 degrees? And to answer that question, we have to know where that cycle ends, which I think they did this on purpose. They cut this graph off, and so you don't know where the cycle ends. You have to figure that out. All right, so what do we know? We do know that. Um, with the start is at 1200 hours and then at 1500 hours it reaches its max so that's three hours later and so we know that this max point here let's use a different color at this max point here we have three we also know that at the lowest point is at 2100 hours and 2100 hours is nine hours after the start so that means that the lowest point here is at nine. And so you may realize that we can count in threes here. It goes from here up 
uh, and then to the top after three units, then back to the center after three units, down to the bottom after three units, and then back to the center after three more units, which means that if this graph were extended to this point, that would be 12. So one cycle is 12 units long. In order to find B, the number of cycles in 360, we then divide 360 by 12, and we get that B is equal to 30. And that's our answer here. All right, so now it goes on to ask us to find the first time after 12 o'clock when the depth is equal to three meters. I've been saying height, but I meant depth. All right, so find the first time that the depth is equal to three meters. And we have an equation, and now we do know what A and B are, which is going to be extremely useful. So let's write that equation down. So D of T is equal to A sine BT plus four. And I'm going to take this to where I have a bit more space and we'll figure this out. All right. So we know in the question that our depth is supposed to be three meters. And so we can substitute D of T for three. We know our amplitude, what we found earlier, is three. And so we substitute that in as well. So that's three sine and we found B, B is equal to 30. And so, of course, we substitute that in as well. So 30T plus four. And so now we're trying to find the time. And uh, something that is key here is they want the first time after 12 o'clock, not before 12 o'clock, um, and not a time way later, the first time after 12 o'clock. All right, so here we're going to now solve for T. And in order to do that, the first thing that we do is we have to subtract the four from both sides and we get that negative one is equal to three sine 30 T. Then we can divide both sides by three and we get that sine 30 T is equal to negative one third. And now we can do the inverse sine function in order to isolate that 30t. So we're going to take the inverse sine of both sides. And we get that, well, 30t on this side. And on the other side, we get negative 19.47 but let's make sure you know how to do that in the calculator you want to make sure you're in degrees so you want to check your mode and we are in fact in degrees so we don't have to change anything and in the calculator you press second and then sign and then type negative one over three close your parenthesis and enter and we get negative 19.47 but that is not going to tell us the time after um, 12 o'clock that would be a time somewhere before 12 o'clock so in order to figure out the first time after 12 o'clock um, this 19 degrees is going to be your reference angle so let's make sure that there we go that is our reference angle And you may recall that a reference angle is the angle from the x-axis. Um, if we were to have a graph with our unit circle, or 19 degrees is the angle from the x-axis. So that is going down here. And of course, this is not accurate, 19.47 degrees. All right. So that's not helpful to us yet because we need the first, the first value in or that is going to give us a positive number. So that negative number is not helpful. So in order to get that positive value and the first positive value, 
we need to add 180 degrees to our reference angle. And we get 199.47 degrees. All right, so now what do we do with that number? We were almost done. So we were at the point where we have 30t is equal to negative 19.47, but we cannot use that number because that is negative. Our first positive number that we can use is 199.47. And so at this point, we divide both sides by 30. And we get that T is equal to 6.649. And that is our answer.